then we will start with the meeting, and then you can But can, 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 I, can I? Can I? Yeah. Can I, oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah. I, oh. Okay. Well, first of all, I didn't want to offend anyone. I mean, it's just that it's just that, like last music on ice was back in uh, 2020. Exactly. So it's three years ago, and uh, since then I've been very busy coaching. And uh, when you coach, it's like I was walking towards here, and I was thinking like a fan meeting, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> why? <laughs> and um, <clears throat> it's just that the focus I, I feel, and it's a little bit, I don't know if some of you have kids, but I don't have kids, but I have many kids. <laughs> and uh, the priority changes a little bit, and the responsibility changes a little bit, and of course, I, I love to perform and I, I love attention, of course, um, but it's just that there is a time for, for things in life and uh, I don't know, it's, it's just a, a, a privilege to, to have this meeting today and I don't, I don't expect it or maybe I, um, I, I didn't hope for it, I don't know, but thank you very much for for being here and thank you for writing messages. It, uh, it really represents um, a lot for me. And uh, yes, I don't know, like I, I don't wanna be uh, dramatic, but I, I don't know how long I will skate. And I, 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 I try sometimes, to, <laughs> I try sometimes to make plans in my head and sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. But um, yeah, I just, when when there is a time for something it happens it's there and I enjoy it and I'm happy if, if we share it um, but we don't know so let's let's just enjoy it and enjoy this meeting today and, uh, and yeah well I don't know how it goes but do are we doing a questions and yes. answers yes okay so I don't know if someone wants to start is there I'll start. yes please I have, I have a question about this better earth. Um, I was in Verona. I came from the States to Verona to the last one. And I'm Verona, back. Verona. In no, to Milano. To the different to Milano. Okay. No, no, to Verona. It's a fan meeting. Please be short this question. Okay, okay. Yeah. Short. <laughs> this better earth. It doesn't matter. This better earth. Yes. You talked about having um, intentions. Yes. And I was curious whether. Um, you could share some of those intentions that you had with us. And also, it seemed to us watching that it became less tortured as you did more and more of them. And I'm curious whether that was a conscious thing or not. Or, so I'm just curious what the, some of the intentions I were think and how they I, played out. Okay, so I think it, it became less and less tortured. Uh, yes and no. It really, the intention is, is uh, every time very different because I, I don't really plan and yesterday afternoon I, I, I didn't even think of the intention for last night and, uh, and just before like putting my skates I, I really felt this emptiness and I just like this was the, the image so usually I, I let one image come to my mind and then this is the image I hold on to and, and yesterday it was really that emptiness like we are just a mass of dust and, and, and we are not much, but um, we are holding on to our needs and dreams and, and uh, this was my kind of uh, uh, intention yesterday. And um, uh, what else? <laughs> it's, once it goes, it goes and I kind of let, let things happen and it's beautiful to perform it because I, I really need to to be um, connected with myself and with the intention that I have in me and um, and I like that spontaneity. I, I didn't dare to do that before and uh, like I said in the past, Hudia who, who helped me choreograph that piece, she wanted to push me uh, um, beyond my comfort zone and she knows that I like things the way I, I want and I wish and uh, she was trying to push me to not have too many 
strict moves, but to really go with, with the flow and to improvise, to allow myself to improvise. So I'm really grateful that she, she had this vision and that she pushed me uh, out of my comfort zone. And, um, and yeah, that's what I'm, a little bit, I mean, there is a lot more, but um, this is for now. For the torture, I think it doesn't really, it's not planned. So sometimes it's something very joyful, very bright, and sometimes sometimes it's a little bit darker, and sometimes it's more aggressive, and sometimes it's more light. And yesterday I felt quite dramatic, and uh, yes, it really depends on the moment, uh, on the atmosphere and the situation. So today it might be completely different. I think so. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you for the coffee. I liked your vocalizations. <laughs> yes, that was also something I was a little bit afraid of, but Rudia really wanted me to like to use my voice as an expression of what happens. Like uh, that's I really work with it or not work with it, but use it as a as a weapon yeah. to to express what I feel and where I am and what is happening. <laughs> please please go ahead. I know Marina she has a lot of questions. <laughs> Yes, the feeling of pain, um, I mean, we all go through pain somehow, and it, it can be physical pain, it can be um, mental pain, me like mental mm -hmm. issues. We all go through this kind of uh, struggle, and we, we pass these obstacles one by one, and, um, and it's, it's a little bit this, this concept of the program that we all have our obstacles, but nevertheless, uh, we are going through and we are advancing and, and there is, throughout the program, there is a lot of open spaces for those opportunities to happen. Uh, I don't know how many times I fell yesterday and it was not planned and I kind of accepted that that's the way it goes and, and it's, it's really part of, of this, it, it feels, um, even if it's bad, it's fine, and um, and yeah, and at the end of the program, I, I love also that was also Hudia's image of the lights should turn off, but the life continues, and it's really the movement mm -hmm. doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really to give that impression that even if it's it's dark. painful, dark, and and hard, it still goes on, mm -hmm. and we have hope, and we have. Uh, a stronger light within ourselves that that continues. Mm -hmm. yeah. well. <laughs> so it's not to, to have pain just to have pain, but it's really yeah. to to give hope. Yeah, that's a kind of a <laughs> so Marina. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, go go for it. I mean, I, I love to, to see all of you and to hear all of you. It's your time to shout and to, <laughs> to use your voice, so please go ahead. Can I, so how is it to be back here in Valenzuela? It's been such an important show for you and such an important environment. And it's, does it feel like homecoming? It is, definitely. I mean, uh, I... I I was talking to Laurent yesterday, and I think the first Music on Ice was back in 2011. So that's uh, the beginning of my post-competitive uh, career. And since then, I have actually uh, lived many great memories here in Bellinzona. So I have some some kind of habits that I like, and uh, um, I don't know. Every time I come here. 
this is a little bit materialistic, but every time I come here, I forget something from my uh, necessaire. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I need to buy, like, for example, this time I forgot my toothbrush, I forgot <laughs> my face cream, um, and what? I forgot a, a third thing. Or I forgot my, like, my, the perfume that I, I use outside competitions. So. Yes, I, I was walking, like I didn't have much time because we are in a different hotel, so I tried yesterday when I had a little moment, to, I don't remember if it was yesterday, yesterday was Friday, I don't remember if it, if it was Thursday or Friday, but I walked to get my little things, and it happens every time in Bellinzona, so I, I get my little things in my necessary in Bellinzona, and it happened, and, uh, and yeah, just to see the the atmosphere and Ticino is, is a very beautiful part of Switzerland and every time I come here I'm amazed by by the nature, by the weather, by the, the spirit that you feel. Uh, just to have palm trees next to the houses is... For Switzerland it's quite something. I mean we have that in Montreux, uh, like a microclimate like that, but, uh, but it's, it feels... Um, very very nice to be back and it feels kind of home but the, I have a lot of homes so <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to travel from one home to another and yes <laughs> Peninsula is definitely one of them mm -hmm. okay I gotta ask one question do you know which date it is today um <laughs> Does it bring any bells? Um, no. I mean, January 14th is usually, I mean, the January, last year. January usually is the year <laughs> of, of Europeans, yeah. yes. Like, the one year, today, one year ago, it was the Dennis Franz Medal nice. day. Nice, nice, so, nice. So, mm -hmm. if you know that now, what comes to your mind remembering that? <laughs> Well, I think I remember the whole week, the, the attitude uh, Dennis had uh, throughout the week uh, in Tallinn, and I was really amazed, and I had that feeling, <coughs> um, when was it? I had that feeling um, with Koshiro and Shoma at Nationals this year's um, practice, the day of the free, where I felt they were so responsible and they knew what they want, they knew what they had to do, they knew how to do it, and this responsibility that they wear and looking so good on them was, uh, was a beautiful moment. So last year with Dennis uh, doing that throughout the week and competing the way he did was really uh, a big moment for me. Sometimes I, I try to understand like when I have a hard day coaching and it not every day is a successful day or I, I don't know what, what successful mean but some days you, you work so hard and you try to teach and give them as much as possible and it just doesn't go the way you want and you're, you need to understand okay why do I do this, where do I want to go with it, what what is it worth for the kid? So you ask yourself all those questions and, and, and then usually the answer is, I want them to be one day, I want them to not need me there, right? I, I want them to, to have this feeling of, I'm invincible and I'm capable and I know myself and I know what I want and I know what I need and I'm doing it. And, and uh, when, when this happens, it's kind of, <laughs> wow, it works. <laughs> so it's a big privilege to live those moments. And, um, and yeah, it was a big, big, big year, big year. Yes, thank you. Yes, back to Koshiro to the Pardon? Pardon? Were you ready for Koshiro to be a I, I didn't expect that. I mean, of course, we, we wish for the best. Um, I was I was super happy that he he was focused on on himself 
and focused on what he had to do. And the, the way he practiced in the morning showed me that he knows what, what he has to do. That was really for me the, the turning point. It was the practice of the frame. Shoma and him, I was at the barrier. I, I, they didn't need me there. And that was for me, wow. I was just enjoying it and I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Since that you mentioned uh, your purpose is to, to teach your students to know what to do without you, do you think Mr. Grutter ever had this uh, <laughs> sense that you know what to do and uh, you know? I, For sure, for sure. I mean, Peter, and he's still in, he's in my life, and, and we are, um, I actually see him tomorrow or Monday, um, and um, I never really liked when people told me what to do. <laughs> and uh, Peter, I think, was a, a good observer. So he was able to kind of genuinely set the framework so I didn't feel the pressure of someone telling me what to do. Nevertheless, he taught me so many things. So yes. In a way, he taught me a lot without me uh, realizing that he's teaching. Exactly. Yes, his presence was was inspiring and uh, giving me a lot of space for being me without putting pressure on me. And I think uh, that's a gift <laughs> when someone is able to to understand you and. Like to keep my energy yeah. with all the things happening yeah. and uh, I have a I have a little motto in my head is the more you do, the more you do. So <laughs> so uh, I think um, <clears throat> once the machine is active it's kind of efficient to keep the engine going, yes? I think the hardest part is when you stop and then you need to restart again. So I try to, even when I'm in a very low intensity, I try to keep the engine going so I can kind of manipulate or manage the energy level, but without fading completely down the energy so to to keep to keep it going at a different intensity but i try to yeah to keep it there like a small fire that goes high many times and very often <laughs> what else is that a good image or yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you transfer that to your students <laughs> um, <laughs> Is there any song you listen to that gives you energy every time you hear it? Well, Michael Jackson, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and every time, like, this is crazy. Like, yesterday, I was on such a, a flow with him, and uh, and Britney, for sure. <laughs> Britney and Michael, they, they are always helping. <laughs> and, uh, and I think 2022 was was a year where I listened a lot to Paolo Nutini because he released a new album and I went to his concert in Montreux Jazz Festival and that was one of those moments where he's like the energy we were talking, he's just like energy, 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 energy and bad, good, doesn't matter, he's there and he was so inspiring and we were watching him, uh, Angelo came and um, and Dennis and Chris were were always uh, also there, and we were j enjoying that so much. Even though uh, I think Dennis do doesn't really know Paolo Nutini, it's it's a little bit uh, probably he's too young to <laughs> know him. But he was impressed. I think not knowing the songs, he was impressed with the the energy. And of course, Angelo, Chris, and I we 
we know him and we know his songs from a long time, so we were so excited. I mean, it was such a good, good concert. I loved uh, listening to, I love James Blake, and um, I did uh, Koshiro's Godspeed uh, two years ago. And uh, during the COVID years, James Blake was releasing, like, was just on Instagram Live where he was doing some concerts at home just by himself. And I love to watch those videos because it really shows how much he loves to, to sing and, and the atmosphere he creates is really beautiful. Um, and uh, the third one that I also liked to listen to is Jamie Collum. Yeah. Um, and he also did like one of the my favorite um, videos of him is one video that um, shows him on a piano by himself in a very nice uh, building and he gives just that concert by himself on the piano and yeah I would I was just looping that on and on and on. Okay, so. I'm ready. <laughs> yes, let's go. I was not doing miss singing yourself. And when was the last I don't time miss you actually singing sing? because I sing every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't stop. Yeah, but just at home. Yeah, and this is. When was the last time you actually like, performed? But I don't know, but I perform. Every time I sing, I perform. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad there, I mean, thank God there is not many people around. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sing well. You sing well. We love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> at Europeans last year, you performed like really nicely. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I think it was like whole fans music and you were like, oh, yes, this yes, video went viral. Yes, yes, yes. And also was that it was a uh, No. Yeah, I mean, I, I perform when I usually, when I sing, I, I, I have the performance that goes with it, so. <laughs> but, for example, during Fantasy on Ice, Johnny and I, we, we sing a lot in the dressing room, we have our moments, so this is also our performance time. But, but yeah, I, I, I think every day is, is a day where I sing and perform. <laughs> Uh, so you returned after a long break to doing shows and we all been uh, enjoying watching your fun Insta stories from Fantasy on Ice and okay. other shows <laughs> and I was wondering if you had like a fun story you could share with us from, uh, from touring know. or um, I mean during Fantasy on Ice it's it's because it's the only tour that uh, I am doing uh, recently it's of course the time where you create uh, relationships with with the skaters and and you see them for a long period of time. So, of course, some some things happen. I, I really like spending time with Guillaume uh, Cizeron. Um, he he's he's so inspiring because he's very very elegant and he has a very great taste of styling and he's a great artist so i really like to scratch a little bit and see what's what's behind that and um but i don't know what what funny i mean usually i think usually there is something funny happening but i i don't have right now in my in my head i mean i had a lot of uh, fun working with Satoko and touring with Satoko also, and uh, and she's also such a a wonderful person to to spend time with. And uh, she's gonna be in Switzerland uh, for Art on Ice, and after that we're gonna spend a little bit of time together also. So there will be more fun moments with her and and yeah. When I think of me and fun, it just doesn't go. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Blackout. Blackout, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Oh, I'm going to ask one question that I know a lot of fans are waiting for. Uh, do you know how to braid Dennis' hair? And so <laughs> <laughs> you don't want 
want you to learn to because they want Dennis to braid his hair. Okay, you know? so do you know, do you I, help him I know hair? how to braid hair, but not very well. <laughs> but uh, I used to do that as a kid. I used to love uh, taking care of hair. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think Dennis is patient enough <laughs> to, to let me practice. I mean, I would need someone to practice. Uh, until I'm good at, and then I would do that uh, for Dennis. But uh, but yeah, he he's not patient enough for me to practice on him. So you could hire someone for this job because it's very important. But, <laughs> but I think it's better if he just asks someone like Gu Guillaume. Yeah, exactly. Guillaume, yes, he, like, Guillaume he told me like he loved it when Guillaume but did Guillaume it. Is <laughs> So good at it. <laughs> he was doing different things, and yeah. everything looked so nice. So I think it's better if he takes someone that you already take master has. From the old. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should do that. Yes. Maybe you should, should just learn it to do it by himself. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, it's hard. It's very it's hard. hard. It's it difficult. difficult. Yeah. But he was. <laughs> <laughs> but he was saying yesterday uh, it, that it's a lot of uh, work to have long hair, and that he really admires everyone who has long hair because it takes so much care and so much time so yes. now he understands yes, <laughs> yes he does he does <laughs> yeah so, so is there anything that you were forced to start doing differently or start doing you during the pandemic years and then if you were like okay maybe but then it worked out so well if you keep doing it like that um Anything in teaching or coaching or anything that you do for yourself? Or? Mm -hmm. I think there was a there was some because I was at home for a long time. There is kind of a routine in the morning. I love to do Sudoku, so in the morning when I instead of like I try to avoid looking at my phone, especially in the morning. I I don't want to get informations. From my phone in the morning like I think it's good to be away from it and then then it can come but but the like the first hour um, so kind of starting the day with enjoying my coffee and my my breakfast and putting my focus on the sudoku helps me to start the engine and uh, once the engine is is working and then I can look at what's, what's happening, the, the plan. And, like, I feel this, is, this becomes our life, and I think mm -hmm. if, if we can first start with ourselves, it's a bit better. <laughs> so, um, this is a little, a little routine that, uh, that I have started, because usually I was always traveling and, and going, and there was no time to set a, a routine. And then when I'm home, this is kind of what what feels right mm -hmm. to to do, because I had that long period of time at home, and and it started like that, and it feels comforting and, and healthy. <laughs> well, and I have a fun, funny moment. <laughs> <laughs> it yes, it came to me. Um, so. Of course, now I'm thinking fun, and I see Gislain right away. Like I'm having so much fun teaching with Gislain, and, and uh, at the Grand Prix final, each practice was so much fun. Um, we were actually singing. You did so, no? Yes, we no, were right. in love. With, it was a concert, so, <laughs> so that was the funniest moment ever. Right, we loved practice. to sing, to sing Beauty and the Beast. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, how, how, music. How yes, yes. Yeah. so and that was our moment. I mean, we, we, we performed it and uh, we loved it. Who's the beauty and who's the beast? In the oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we play all the roles, everything. <laughs> so, yeah, this, is, this was something. And we had also, I don't know if you've heard. Um, but there was a little incident with some fire in the coach's hotel in Torino. So that was also a funny moment where all the coaches, thank God it was in the coach's hotel, but at 1.30 in the morning, all coaches met at the reception because the alarm, the fire alarm went off. And it was 
so funny to see all coaches in pyjama. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. I mean, Shoma is, he, he's so um, easygoing and uh, so focused at the same time, but he's really he, calm and relaxed, but at, at the same time, his engine is on. Yes, on for, for what he has in his mind. It's, it's unbelievable how he's able to bring his attention on, on one thing and then just take that my way. Okay, so the biggest problem I have with with uh, this uh, idea is that my arms are very weak compared to my legs, and I'm very bad at handstands. So I would be uh, skating a very short, <laughs> very very short program. <laughs> and, um, but I know a lot of skaters that are like Sarah Meyer. She would definitely be able to skate on her hands. Like she's very good at balancing on her hands, so, um, yeah, and I know other people also very good at that. I'm, I'm terrible. <laughs> so you don't want to see that performance. <laughs> you do a good cartwheel. Yes, yes, because my legs, they, <laughs> they help me a lot. I think you talk about having a virtual garden in the 2021 Atwood Skating interview. Mm -hmm. Now that everything has restarted, how is the garden doing? Do you have any harvest this year? Yes, year? yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Actually, the garden is doing great, except the kale. The kale just went like... <laughs> <laughs> because it, it was actually doing very, very well, but it got so big, and with the first snow, it just went like... <laughs> down. Uh, but we we had a lot of vegetables. Uh, I ate. Uh, we had tomatoes. We had leek. Uh, we had um, beetroots. Um, I was cutting a lot of uh, persil. How do you say persil? Parsley. Parsley. Yes, parsley. And chives. And dill. Dill. We had dill. Basilic. We we also had. Um, peppers, we had one beautiful red bell pepper, um, one, yeah. the other one was too shrinked, and the uh, eggplant, we had one, and what else did we get from the garden, and kale, of course, there was so much kale, I didn't know what to do, so I just let it fall, and, um, uh, there was more our oh, celery, celery crunch, um, and um, what else did, did we plant? There were more things, but no, that's what I remember. But you like the process of gardening? Yeah. Yes, I love. I love to see how it grows, and I love to see when something appears. Like you don't, you don't find out, and suddenly, boom! There is a vegetable. You're like, but <laughs> how did I miss it? From <laughs> From one day, to, oh, and we had also um, zucchini. Yes, that was really nice. 
Marco Gensi. Yeah, but it's so funny, like from the flower, and the next day it's a courgette, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> hello? <laughs> so, maybe a few days have passed, but you, you don't realize it, and, and suddenly it's there. So yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And we are in the mountains, so I, I, I would think that maybe it's not the best place, because it's not warm enough, or the conditions are not, but it grows. So it's, it's quite amazing. Are you teaching in East Africa? So I have actually, um, my, my brother has two girls and one of them skates. And she actually competed yesterday and she will do the free tomorrow. And then um, my sister has a, a daughter. She's turning five in one month. And uh, I got her first skate, I got her, her first skates uh, last week. Or it was, it was on Monday, maybe on Monday, yes. So we tried them on on Wednesday, and she likes them. And all she wanted to do was splits. <laughs> she was only interested in splits. <laughs> and it was so hard. I was trying to make her turn, but she wanted to do splits. <laughs> I was like, you need to keep your legs together. And she was like, Not listening and just going. <laughs> so yeah. Is also something. <laughs> well, uh, we have one more question. Yes, please. If you could go back in time and talk to your younger self from your teenager years, what would you say to yourself? Go sleep. <laughs> go sleep. Rest. Everything will be fine. <laughs> Why you have to worry? You worried too anxious when you were. Probably I was, yeah, I was kind of overdoing and, I mean, I I, I love to sleep, so probably that's why I was, <laughs> but probably I I was very 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 worried, and uh, and feeling like I have to do it have to do it so I would probably tell myself you have to do it that's right but go and rest sleep so this is what you will tell your children no <laughs> <laughs> the same, yes if they feel if they are no. in that state yes but uh, but not all of them would need that <laughs> you need to wake up <laughs> your coaching methods would work well on you as a student? Like for example, I'm a teacher, the way I teach wouldn't work with me as a student. I, I don't know. I don't know how I would react with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably lose all my hair. <laughs> as a student or as a coach? As a, as a coach. <laughs> being a coach and like one head and a, and a skater and another head. So I was thinking when we were watching in Champelli, where you were basically doing both at the same time, did, did they come together or were they, are they still separate? At the beginning, head? at the beginning, I was never skating in Champelli because I, I had this atmosphere of coaching and it didn't feel like, first of all, I, I like to have someone when I skate, to have someone watching and just giving me a little bit of attention so I can reflect what I do. And, um, and then I, when I was practicing, I was planning to visit Salome in Zurich and I would, that's where I was skating with her and, and having my practice time. And uh, then, of course, um, the, the coaching took over and then I had to find times for myself to, to but like in the show, in the in which the Christmas, Christmas, show. In the Christmas show? Oh, in the Christmas show. I mean, I, I had a lot of support from my colleagues, so it was fine. But uh, of course, and I, I know the kids, so it's it's kind of 
easy. I just saw when I was doing the, the, the part that uh, my little girl sh that was leading one line, she didn't pass where I, I told them to pass. <laughs> and then I'm performing and I'm just like, oh my god, where is she going? <laughs> and how is she going? Because there were a lot of cables and a lot of lights and I was just like, how is she going to pass those lights and things? <laughs> <laughs> and then the the more I was uh, going and, and I could see that okay they they find a way and some skaters were already passing and some not and it, it kind of worked out but I was a little bit worried there but except that I mean it's so nice to I think the most important part there is not me coaching them or me skating it's really like we are performing together and we we need the performance to go as a group and uh, and solidarity is is the one priority in that in that uh, moment did you get any feedback from your students about your skating <laughs> um, <laughs> i don't know if they mentioned something i i know that they they practiced they watched while we were practicing and and they don't see me skate, and probably they they, they yeah, that's see why me I skate. Like, they, they, uh, like yeah. you said, that they, they didn't see your progress, so they yeah. didn't actually see you skate. Yeah, exactly. Like, what was the reaction? But uh, I I think some of them were were quite uh, inspired because I I could see that they during the the next practice that followed the rehearsal they were a bit like okay I. If he can do it, <laughs> <laughs> some of them had this uh, attitude. He, he can actually skate. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I should listen to him. <laughs> you can have like a reverse coaching day, like the students try to coach the coaches, and then they will yes. see how difficult it is. Yes, it's true. Well, actually, um, we sometimes when. Uh, when Angelo is out for competitions and we need some help, Dennis and Koshiro are, are helping and they see how, yes, they see. I mean, it's really good to learn, it's really good to teach mm -hmm. because then you understand. Sometimes we do things unconsciously, like complex things unconsciously and when you need to go through it and think about it, it actually starts to make sense. But until you, you, you teach, you don't realize it. And you just do it naturally because you're talented. It or seems because easy to you. Exactly, exactly. Like you think, but why do why do I need to go through uh, so many steps to learn a three turn? And then when when you actually have a kid, you need to really like place their arms and place their hips and put them on the circle, teach them that there is a circle, like all those little things that when you do it, it's like you don't think, yeah. So just to go through that process allows you to, to learn deeper and better and connect what you do unconsciously with what you consciously, consciously uh, teach together becomes like a really strong uh, feeling. <coughs> Please. Yes. We have si six minutes and then I have my taxi taking me. So let's, let's do two more questions? Two more? Two more questions? Depends on the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take one more question. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking for a friend who could. Okay, talk. yes. Uh, and she's, she's interested in uh, what kind of person you like. <clears throat> I like, um, for the summer, I like very fresh. Fresh and um, and light, and for the winter I like woody and rather heavy and um, yeah. I don't know if it if you can picture something or not. <laughs> like I, I really like the a little bit lemon for the summer, like lemon and fresh and something that is smells like Sicily. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, winter, um, something wood, woody, and <laughs> that's what I just said. <laughs> 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 
That's because I coach European <laughs> 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 Okay, I just wanted to say one thing. Stefan is not going to the hotel, so I know that you brought, brought presents. We will gather them together and I will make sure that he gets them. But, but if like, I don't know, we can do it after you leave or if you want, we can use these five minutes for you like to present or we can use these five minutes to talk. It's like your job. So. I don't know if you want to. Group picture? We do a quick group picture. Yeah. I think I'll go there. And so just wait a minute. Wait a minute. One, one, no, no, stop it. I just want you before that to add this something because once again, after our interview, people are really stressed that you are going to announce that you are stopping. Please say that, yes, like it's in the future maybe, but it's not your last show today and probably. <laughs> I, I, cannot, I, I, I cannot guarantee anything, and I think uh, we should not worry. I should not worry, and what happens, happens, and... But it's our fault. Yeah, you don't worry, you don't worry. No, but, but I could worry also. Like, it's, it's, it's hard to, to know, and like I said, like, sometimes I try to plan in my head, and sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but you do enjoy it but very yes, much. Do you of course, I enjoy it. And he did triple triple yesterday. I mean, but it's not me. about triple triple. It's just, <laughs> of course, I enjoy. It's it's not at all that I don't enjoy, or if I stop, it's because I don't enjoy it anymore. It's it's not that. It's just there is in life there is a time for for things, and I think when it's happening, it's happening, and when it's not, we. Of course, there is a little sadness, but um, or a big sadness. I don't know, but um, yeah, it's something stops, something starts. It's normal. You once said to me that you want to get to the stage where, like, you go on the ice and people say, "Come on again," and like just like that. So I just hope that this meeting and this book they, gave you a feeling that they, we are so not there. <laughs> And please, when it, we are there, just say stop. <laughs> if I don't understand it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I allow you to throw me tomatoes. <laughs> Your speaking yesterday was wonderful. It really, it was so inspiring, and it really showed still that you are. So it was still. So you get to see the best. <laughs> Okay, so you want the picture? Si. And then, sure. then I'll collect... Uh,